what's up you guys and I know you guys are excited to see me today guess what it's not a training video you don't have to worry about that it is a shoe review and I'm excited to show you the shoe review on this particular shoe right here but before we get into that I did go for a run today in this shoe four and a half miles 835 a mile uh, which is about my normal pace for just a normal day just trying to put in some mileage no speed work no nothing just a normal just go out hit the pavement just do some runs uh, and don't go crazy just four and a half miles at 835 a mile so uh, if you're a fan of Reebok running shoes and let's face it probably not a lot of people out there run in Reebok running shoes anymore because they don't really market themselves they don't they they just they don't sponsor I don't think they sponsor anybody any if you know of any runners professional runners that are sponsored by Reebok please drop them in the comment section below because I, I certainly don't know uh but they, they don't promote events outside of CrossFit but they don't promote running events they don't promote a professional runner as far as I know so that but they actually make some really banger running shoes I mean, honestly, they do. And this one is no different. Now, most of you know, if, if you've watched my other videos, you know that I had a pair of Reebok Flowride Run 2.0s, and they were one of my favorite shoes that I've ever ran in uh, up to this date. Uh, they were comfortable. That Flowride material, midsole material was awesome. The upper was good. Uh, the exoskeleton cage was very unique, but it worked. Uh, but it was just an amazing shoe and it lasted a long time. I mean, I put some miles in that shoe and the midsole wore out before the outsole did and the upper, to be honest. So, uh, I really love those shoes and I'll be honest with you. I haven't had a pair of shoes that have really compared to those shoes as a long runner, daily trainer, kind of multifaceted shoe that that shoe was until today. And I'm excited about this because this is the Float Ride Energy 3.0. Or in some areas around the world, you might know this as the Reebok Forever Float Ride Energy 3.0. The new iteration of the Energy 2.0, which was an award-winning shoe. There was a bunch of magazines or, or online articles that said they absolutely love the Float Ride Run or, or the Float Ride Energy 2.0. This is the new iteration of the shoe, and it comes with a ton of updates. In fact, take the old 2.0, throw it away. This is an entirely different shoe. It's an entirely different shoe from the top to the bottom. I'm going to get that into that here in a second. Now, like I said, I did do four and a half miles in this shoe at 835 a mile, and it was a super comfortable ride. I do have to say I really like that. Uh, but... Let me go into this, start with the upper, midsole, and the outsole with this shoe. And the upper is made of a, uh, a weave material, a machined weave or whatever material that they use. Uh, very similar uh, in the way that it looks to Vaporfly, okay? It's very similar to vapor vapor Vaporfly. It's super breathable, um, but... Unlike Vaporfly, there are some areas that are fully uh, open, which is mainly on the sides of the shoe, which is nice because it's super, super breathable. But they've also added some material down in the toe box area underneath, which is like a jersey type material underneath to increase its durability. So you can run this thing for a long time and not have to worry about your toes blowing through this thing. Uh, so there are some things that I like about it, but it's super breathable material. It is super lightweight and it's nice and loose. I mean, but don't let that looseness fool you. It locks you down really well. The upper on this thing is absolutely amazing. I knew as soon as I put my foot in that this was going to be an amazing shoe and I hadn't even laced it up yet. It was just that good. It felt that good on the top of my foot. And as soon as I laced it down, oh, heavens 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 it felt like a running shoe that was made for me it really did it was it was truly amazing so the upper is super comfortable even with that weave material it is super super comfortable it does have a gusseted tongue 
in there, although the uh, gussets or whatever start really low on the tongue. Uh, so it does have some flexibility to that, but it's it starts really low on the tongue. The tongue does have some nice padding to it. It's not overly padded. I wouldn't say it's like an Asics or a Saucony type of padding, but it's definitely not a Nike Pegasus padding, Pegasus 37 padding, where it's, well, there's, there's pretty much nothing on that uh, as far as padding is concerned. So when you lace it down, and this does have some really nice thin laces uh, to keep weight down, uh, but when you tie the shoe down and lace it down, it is super comfortable on the top of your foot. That being said, I never had an issue, even from the first lace up all the way through the four and a half mile run, never had an issue with the shoe becoming loose or wanting to, my foot feeling like it wants to come out. The lockdown was incredibly good, even in that heel cup area, uh, was just incredibly good. So I really do like that. You can tell that they made this shoe with the idea that the shoe is going to go the distance because they did reinforce the eyelet chain with some thicker material up top. You can see it's sewn on right here to make sure that this is gonna last a long time. You can tell that they took some time with this shoe. And by the way, I know I didn't mention it. I love the color of this shoe. I really, really do. I love this orange color with that dark blue. Amazing. Love the old school Reebok stripes up the side. Very flat. I, to me, it's very flashy. I like this shoe. Uh, it looks amazing to me as far as a running shoe is concerned. Uh, it does have a nice heel flare right here around the heel cup, some nice padding. It's not overly padded, so it's not a super plush shoe, but it's, it's not minimalist, okay? It's got a little bit more padding than the Pegasus 37 right here, uh, but it, it, it's not overly done. It wouldn't be like a Saucony Triumph, uh, for instance. So that's really nice. One thing that I thought was really, really cool, and I don't think you'll be able to see it, but way down in there, you'll see it says millimeter. I have to flip this the other way here. Millimeter nine. So it's a nine millimeter drop on this shoe. Okay. That's actually pretty good. I mean, it's not like Nike. Nike's a 10. Uh, I have a pair of Saucony that's eight. This is a nine kind of fits right in between. So it's not bad. Uh, heel counter, eh, not a stout heel counter, but it does have some support, a little bit lower on here, but it does have some support back there, so it's really not a bad shoe uh, as far as its stability is concerned. It is a neutral running shoe, as you can see right there, wiggle, 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 wiggle going on right there, uh, but the upper is just, in my in my opinion, it's a, it's an amazing upper. Small little issue though, had around the toe area, you can kind of feel it's right where the, the tongue would be seamed onto the bottom of where, or the top of the toe box right here. It kind of scrunched up right there at the top of my foot when I was walking. When I was running, never noticed it, didn't cause any problems, didn't cause any discomfort, uh, didn't even really notice it. But the initial walk, when I was walking to my starting point, uh, I could feel that little bit and it only happened on my left foot not on my right could just be a difference there but just right there i just noticed a little bit of scrunching up uh so that's the only thing that i would say that i had an issue with as far as this upper was concerned the only other thing that i would wish nike or nike wished reebok would have kept on this version from the 2.0 was that little loop that held the tongue in place on the eyelet chain here I wish they would have kept that. I also wish they would have kept that pull tab on the back. That's just, and I know that's that's minimal. Uh, some people like the pull tab, some people don't. I just wish they would have kept that, that's all. Uh, but other than that, it's, it's a phenomenal upper. I really do like this upper. Um, it's kind of a mix between what you could use as a race, racing shoe upper and a daily trainer upper. So that's kind of the best way I can describe it. If you're looking for a breathable shoe, this is amazing. It's going to breathe extremely well for you uh, if you're in a warmer climate like I am here in Florida. Midsole, Float Ride Energy Midsole. If you know what Float Ride Energy Midsole is, it's basically like these tiny foam beads uh, that are kind of smushed together uh, to create this midsole. And it's kind of like it, it feels very similar to Adidas Boost, I guess you could say but it's a lot lighter and more responsive. 
And by more responsive, I mean a little bit more bouncy than what the Adidas is, um, than the Adidas Boost. Uh, so kind of like, and I can't even uh, compare it to Saucony's Power Run Plus, uh, even though that is kind of similar as well, but it's it's lighter. It's, it's really lightweight, but it's got incredible amount of cushion and rebound and energy return and bounce and all that. It's just weird. Stack height on this, can't find anywhere, anywhere to find stack height information on this shoe. Crazy as it is, can't find anywhere. Comparing it to other shoes, I compared it to my PEG 37s. I want to say this is a 14 or a 15 millimeter stack height in the front for a nine mil drop. That's going to put this at about a 23 or 24 millimeter in the rear. So it's slightly higher than the old version, which was a 12 mil front, nine mil drop, 21 millimeter rear. So it's a little bit more stack height uh, than the outgoing 2.0, which is fine because I think if you wanna run a little bit longer, you get a little bit more cushion out of that. I think it's gonna be great. Uh, that being said, four miles, I didn't feel fatigued at all. My feet didn't hurt. I didn't have any problems underneath. Still got good road feel, but I still felt like I could go longer. I didn't because I have other training things that I'm gonna be doing. That being said, I know I could pick up the pace in this shoe. It has that energy in it. I can pick up the pace in this shoe. It's light, even after four and a half miles, it didn't feel like I had some weights underneath my feet. It felt good. Uh, so I do have to say that that midsole, being as light as it is, it does kind of have a rocker shape. You can kind of feel that when you're doing that toe off. Uh, and the other thing is, is it's it's flexible it's a flexible shoe okay which is surprising because we go to the outsole and it's like all rubber <laughs> it's except for this little decoupled groove right here it's all rubber but there's that much flex to it that much flex and this is a brand new shoe that's crazy i i mean I, it just it, it astounded me to run in that and have that much flexibility with that much rubber on it. Nike, Nike, Reebok, ugh, I keep going back. Reebok, you guys did an amazing job with this shoe. Uh, that outsole is going to be incredibly durable, let me tell you that. I mean, just looking at the, the these little pills right here, oh my gosh, you can tell that these things are gonna last a long time. Even the, the heel area where you got your heel strike area zone, it's a little bit thicker rubber right here on the outside in that heel strike area. And you can tell that it is just built to be a durable, durable, durable shoe. Um, it's gonna last long haul. I can see you can run easily wet conditions in this. Um, definitely damp. Uh, if you wanna take it on some light trails, you could probably do that too. Um, I wouldn't use this as a trail running shoe, obviously, but it's a road running shoe. And I did my four and a half miles, all pavement runs. Uh, in the shoe, but it is just, it, it's an amazing design here. And the amount of flexibility that you get for that full rubber is amazing. I feel like though, they could have maybe done a little bit to lighten this up just that little bit more. Eight and a half ounces for a size 10 and a half, which is what this shoe size is, is not bad. But I feel like they could have made this decoupled groove just a little bit bigger to give you a little bit more trampoline type of bounce to it. And it would have shaved some weight I also feel like they probably could have cut maybe some flex grooves, even though this thing's a really flexible sh uh, shoe, but if they would have cut some flex grooves in it, maybe made it feel like a more natural type of strike movement, maybe that would have lessened a little bit of weight. I don't think that they need to expose a lot of foam on here. I'm not one of those guys that say, just have a bunch of exposed foam, but I just feel like they could have done just a little bit more to maybe lessen some of the weight. As we know, rubber is tends to be, but this is carbon rubber. So it is supposed to be a lighter weight rubber uh, and it does a really good job. It's durable, but it's lightweight and it's flexible. It does a really good job. I'm excited about this uh, shoe. So this is my initial review of the shoe. If I had to give this a score, the, the upper, let's do the upper. Um, out of 10, I'm going to give the upper a, and I'm being critical on this. I'm going to give the upper 
an 8.1. I think that's fair with the upper uh, because it's breathable, but it's comfortable. It's It has everything going on. It's just a few minor little things that I think they you know could tweak on a little bit, but uh, for the most part, I think this upper is phenomenal. So I think 8.1 on the upper is a really good midsole material. Um, I think it's perfect, perfect stack height. Uh, I think anywhere from about that 15 to 17 stack height for a daily trainer is perfect. It gives you just enough road feel with just enough cushion so you can go distance with it. You can do uh, maybe some easier runs with it. Uh, you can pick up the pace with it. So I, I think that the midsole is like the perfect stack height and being this type of material, this float ride energy material, incredible amount of balance to it. Uh, just an incredible amount of comfort. It's not too soft. It's not too firm. I think it's just right in the middle. Very similar to, I don't want to say React, but I think it's just a better version of, of Adidas Boost. I really do. I think it's just a better version of it. Um, so I'm going to give the midsole, midsole material an 8.8 .8 out, of, out of 10. That's pretty high. Okay, if you're in the nines, that is like, to me, that is like, you're an excellent shoe. I'm going to give this an 8.8 .8 on the midsole. So we're doing really good right now. This on the bottom with how flex, I don't know how Reebok does it, how flexible that rubber is and how light the shoe is. I, I'm, I'm not going to lie. I'm going to put this up there to 8.5 just because it's going to be incredibly durable and it's going to be uh, something that lasts a long time. Adding on to that. Price point, hundred bucks. It's a hundred dollar shoe. It's a hundred bucks, guys. Buy it. Just buy it. It's cheap. It's it's. I'm just go. And Reebok is always doing some sort of promotion on their website. Buy the shoe. Honestly, hundred bucks. You can't go wrong. You will not regret buying this shoe. It is amazing. Just buy it. Uh, hundred bucks. I'm I'm sorry. Pull it out. Nine point five out of ten because of the price. The whole shoe itself, in my opinion, is a 9.1 out of 10 because the performance, the materials, the quality, everything you're getting for a hundred bucks and it's gonna be a shoe that lasts a long time. This thing is the best budget shoe that you could possibly buy. And in my opinion, if you're going to buy a daily trainer running shoe that compares to the Nike Pegasus, but Maybe you don't want to spend Pegasus money, which I know is only like 20 bucks more. This is the shoe to buy. Honestly, guys, you can't go wrong with this shoe. Hands down, this is an amazing shoe. Uh, and this is just the, the initial review of it. So um, I'm not going to go crazy on you guys. It To me, 100 bucks is just worth buying it just right now based on my initial run on this. But here's what I'm going to do. So... I'm going to run in this shoe for an entire week. Okay. I'm going to do all of my training in this shoe at the end of the week. I'm not sure how many miles I'm going to have probably only like 30 miles on the shoe, but I'm going to do an update video to show you, to give you my opinion on what this does with all the different training that I've done to show you what this shoe is capable of. Okay. So that's what I'm going to do. Initial review of the Reebok Floatride Energy 3.0. Guys, thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video. Click that like, subscribe, all that. Watch my other videos, all that kind of stuff. Uh, thank you for watching. And as always, guys, enjoy the run.